So it says this part needs to be done using the normal Linux system since we need a text editor. And you need the util Linux package again for this section. If you haven't deleted it before, you can skip the first two steps. Well, um, I always clear out the sources after I've finished with them just to ensure that I'm starting from fresh. So we'll need to extract them again. Util Linux. And go back in, configure it with configure. And oh, was this the one that didn't have a configure actually, wasn't it? Yeah, so we just go into the login utils directory. As I say, I don't know, well, I presume, I don't think there's a different version from a different source, but I assume that the util Linux that was originally used for the write up was different, obviously, to the one that I'm using now. So login utils, compile a getty and login by running make a getty and login. So simple enough. And then copy a getty to fs sbin and copy login to LFS bin and we can tidy that up. So now we need to modify the LFS etc init tab and it says next step is to modify it so that the agetty is started on a virtual console every time we start the system. This is how it works on most if not every Linux system. So edit the file, find this line and remove it. One colon two three four five respawn. So it looks like that line there ends in sbin login, su login. So let's we won't actually remove it because we're developing something here. So I'm going to remark it out. And where the previous line was, put the following lines. So these are obviously the bits of code that spawn the virtual terminals. All six of them, which are pretty standard for Linux, as it's already said. Just tidy that up. Unfortunately, there's tab or spaces in in front here. It's not like the modern ones where you can just copy and paste a group of text and uh, it copies it nicely. So just tidy that up if you want to. You don't have to, but it just looks neater. Um, every time you log on to a Linux system, the var run utemp file is modified when this file isn't present a lot of programs start complaining i think we've already seen that um, including a getty and login so we just create an empty dollar file run utemp file and those programs won't uh, complain anymore so we need to create a var run directory first of all and create the empty file using touch So we should have that there now, an empty file in LFS var run. And there it is. If you want, you can test the system now, restart the system and boot into the LFS system. After the kernel and sysv init are done loading, Agetti should start and prompt you with the username. Since the only user you currently have is root, you should log in as root. So what I'll do is shut this down now. And let's just take a look at the next bit. Right, okay, so we install Vim. Um, and it says you no longer to need, need to reboot your computer into the normal Linux system and back to the LFS system. Um, as Well, that, that's true because basically everything's complete. We can install Vim and everything else from within the new system. But what I plan on doing is to carry on as if it was a partially installed system because... Um, what I want to do is get to a point where I've got Telnet running um, on the new system. So I again, I can access the new system remotely. And, and as it says, we can carry on building the new system, but building it locally. Um, I'm pretty sure from what I've read in the text that it assumes that you're just typing all these commands in by hand. Um, there's no suggestion about um, doing this remotely. Okay, so 
installing Vim, we need to install NCurses first of all. So let's start by logging in first of all. So this tests whether the um, login works that we just built. So login as root, and because I've set the password to be blank, it's let me log in straight away without asking me for a password. As I say, I think the way that the book mentions how to get the password sorted out is incomplete because um, Sue 6.1 uses Shadow, and the book doesn't mention anything about co copying Shadow apart from I can't remember if it remembers saying copying the Shadow file, but it doesn't say which ones to copy. Um, I'm not completely sure. I didn't bother trying to copy them. Um, so I just thought it's easy to set it to an empty password. It just makes it easy to log on while we're developing this. Um, Shadow does get installed later on. So we can tighten the password situation down later on when we finish building the system. So now we can go to sources and start building. So we need to start with ncurses, so segcat ncurses, and bear in mind everything we run now, all the programs that are run and executed, uh, we've got the absolute minimum to carry on building the system into a bigger system, which we're starting to do now with ncurses and Vim. Um, they've all been compiled statically, that's all the work we've done in preparation during our time in SUSE 6.1. And in theory, we don't need SUSE 6.1 anymore. We could just carry on here forever. Um, I can't remember if I do need to boot back into it to complete part of the build or not. But if I do, it's just for a minimal amount of time. So end curses, extract. Right, it says could not create file, no such file or directory. Right, and why is that? Curses. Right, I know what it is. I remember I had this problem before. It's because we still haven't got an ETC FS tab. Um, and it's because the um, file system is set to boot as read only for protection because we had this limited um, login and log out. So that's something again that's missing from the um, instructions. So what we need to do next is to mount the um, root partition as, yes, I've made a note there in my notes, let's just correct that. Remount root as read write. So do mount minus n minus o rw comma remount slash dev slash hda6 and we mount that to the root. And now we should be able to extract without any errors and there we go. So it says configure the package by running configured shares. So we're not building statically anymore. We're building uh, shared libraries. Um, and that's the reason why we rebuild a lot of the programs that we've already built so that we can rebuild them with shared library access. Um, just makes more efficient use of the file system. So configure with shared.
And then it says, because NCURSIS isn't 100% correct, according to the latest C standard, we need to compile it with GCC 2723. So they use this form of make where the compiler is overridden so it doesn't get searched for. This overrides the compiler that's going to be used. So let's time this. I imagine it'll take a few minutes. Make CC equals, and we can just use the auto completion to look for this without having to type it all in. And just wait for that to complete building now.
Okay, that's finished compiling. So the next thing we've got to do is to install the term info files by making run install.data. So make install.data. And then it says to go to the test directory and run a few programs to verify the libraries are working. So CD test, let's see what's in there. Okay, so there's a few things in here. Let's try Hanoi, I can see straight away. And yes, that looks like Towers of Hanoi game. So let's try this. Yep, that seems to be working fine. Yep, that's okay. Got colours, it's all formatted correctly. Um, let's try rain. Oops. That looks okay. And I also saw Christmas, which is appropriate at this time of the year. Okay, well, yep, it all seems to be working okay. All the graphics are moving, they're coloured and so on. So that's fine. Let's get the browser back again. See what to do next. Install the libraries by running make install. Okay, because we're in the test directory, so we need to go back and run make install from the original install uh, compile directory. And that's all done. So let's go back and remove that. And we can move on to installing Vim itself now. It says Vim comes in two parts, a source package and an RT or runtime package. You need, to, you need both in order to install Vim. If you put both archives in the same directory, the unpacked files of both archives will appear in the same directory that will be created when you unpack the first. It doesn't matter which one you unpack first. So unpack the Vim source and the Vim RT archive. So this is a cat Vim source tile minus XV. Okay, you can see I'm having a bit of trouble with the keyboard. It's not set up for the UK layout and also some of the um, keys don't work correctly. So if I press the delete key, that happens. Um, I think there's another button that doesn't work as expected either. So I have to bear with the typos. So this is the source part of Vim. And then we need to extract the RT part. So now we can go into Vim 5.5 .5 and it says to configure the package by running configure. And once again, it says also Vim does not compile with GCC 2.95.2, so we have to compile it with GCC 2.7.23 as well. So let's recall that command with the make and GCC 2.7.23 and wait for that to build.
Okay, that's done. So now let's install it. And that's Vim complete. So in theory, if I type Vim, yep, it's working. So I've now got a way of editing files. The only thing is I cannot, although I can edit files, I still cannot paste, copy and paste, because it's just physically impossible to do that. 